So I stumbled upon some really interesting content from a book called The High Frontier by Gerald K. O'Neill. This guy, a long time ago, not that long ago, but 1977, which is a relatively long time ago, wrote this crazy book. And what it's about is humans colonizing space. So from there on out and even before that we had made movies about you know from Star Wars, Star Trek, all these different movies about what space travel and colonization would be like and you know everybody thinks you know obviously we'd have cities there but this guy actually put together like a practical sort of out like a framework of what that would look like and kind of what we could do to achieve that. So in the book, he's got basically this idea that we would have these sort of cities, right? And you know, like what will we exist in? Right? We could potentially find planets to exist in, but the main idea of the book is that to colonize space, we would have to obtain and use the resources that are already out there so arguably lots of planets that we already know or have gotten samples from and asteroids that we've observed have metals and resources that we can use to build stuff with so the idea is we get a hold of it and build something that looks like this so it's this big circular it's like a cylinder that just spins and it creates gravity on the like interior of the cylinder and so within that cylinder if you make it big enough the idea is that you can like let's just say you know it's pretty much just a tube right and inside this tube you could put land um, your oxygen water create this sort of biome that humans could live in right that's made just for us and we could build cities there, farm our food there, and everything. And these cities could be their own object within space, or they could sort of hover around a planet. And that's where we get to the mining. So the whole idea of this isn't possible unless we could figure out how to get resources so the two things that we could do is get a hold of asteroid resources so just go up to an asteroid just kind of latch onto it and then just start drilling and sort of grabbing the minerals out and then taking them back so they can get processed or even processing them on the moon and we could do this all with like uh you know unmanned vehicles you know humans arguably wouldn't have to go there. We could remote control it because we've remote controlled vehicles out to, you know, rovers and things like that out to space. We haven't done like this level uh, so much, but we have sent things out in space that have come back. So arguably those things could go out, attach themselves to an asteroid, grab a load of resources, and then come back, and bring those in. It would be crazy, but we are so, so close to that. We've got SpaceX working on some crazy stuff. We've got Jeff Bezos' company. I forgot what that's even called. But he's working on some crazy stuff. And we just recently are starting the Space Force, which pretty much means we're going after space resources. Some sort of space colonization is getting more money thrown at it one way or another. That's all that's going on. So these back to these cylinders these spinning cities would be self-sustainable right they would probably be attached to some sort of mining facility whether it be like on the moon right so arguably some people think there's resources on the moon we don't really know i guess some people think we know i am not going to say that i know um at this point in time i haven't done the research that deep but Arguably, there's something on the moon to be mined, right? These planets are solid. 
They probably have metals underneath the surface or somewhere close to the surface that we could access. Get a hold of those, take those metals, send them back up to the, you know, the spinning cylinder and ship them off to wherever they need to go. Back to Earth, maybe, maybe back up. Obviously, this would take a long time, um, but, you know, crazy stuff. This is definitely the near future. And when I say the near future, I don't see us unable to reach this within 50 years. And that sounds crazy, but if we can get our hands on the resources, there's a lot we can do because one of these cylinders is not really, you know, that much bigger than a couple of the skyscrapers we built. And we built those pretty fast. We just had to have the materials, people threw them together. And these things would make a lot of money. It's argued that an asteroid has a trillion dollars of resources in it. So if we could get into mining multiples of those, it would be insane. But back to the cylinders, I know there's a couple of movies. There's like one with Matt Damon in it where all the rich people live in this sort of spinning cylinder up in the atmosphere of Earth. It just sort of like satellites the Earth. And up there, he just at one point in the movie just flies into it and crashes it on somebody's lawn, right? And um, yeah, it's, it's basically built off that it's just this giant spinning circle in the sky and the idea is that it's like solar powered but i would argue that we need to get to obtain this not just to construct this and not just to mine these satellites we need a stronger form of energy so we need something that blows solar power out of the water because out in space we need something so I don't know if that's fusion or something that we haven't discovered yet or something that we haven't let off the chain yet because there's a lot of alternate concepts that are going around but for some reason we've had combustion engines for a really really long time we've been focusing on you know engines that burn fuel and we we just haven't gotten past that and some people think that we have options that could push us past that. But regardless of that, we need that because we can't go flying around in space building these massive structures, running on gasoline or jet fuel. There's just It's just not feasible at all for that to happen. So we need something that runs off of a different form of energy. And I don't think the solar is at the point where it could be refined to get to this mass. But, I mean, or to get to what it needs to push out this little energy to make this stuff happen. Because as you can see, these structures are massive. They've got whole, you know, acres and acres of land. I mean, it's ridiculous. They've been terraformed all the way out. They've got mountains, valleys, bridges. I mean, obviously in concept, but, you know, to create something like Earth in a cylinder have it out in space it'd be pretty crazy but you know how else would we live in space because there's a lot of movies about space where people just go crazy when they're cooped up in some little you know metal and plastic spinning spaceship thing right it, it just doesn't it's just not good on us psychologically we would you know need to be on a planet or something that mimics a planet and this is that and there's a lot of planets where we just can't survive like our physical form cannot survive on there's planets like i think venus the gravity on it would just cr crush you instantly if you were on it and you know there's some planets like mars where we just can't exactly breathe the air that's there and there's a lot of concepts about being able to change the atmospheres and, you know, the sizes of these planets and a bunch of other things that would, you know, decrease and increase the gravity. But that is a whole other thing because you're talking about changing the size of a planet or changing its atmosphere. You're getting into energy, you know, an energy output that, you know, can't be met with a diesel bulldozer. You need something massive. You need new technology. So as soon as we make that leap, and I feel like that's coming fairly soon then we're going to be able to be in, in the in the range of being able to do this. You know, it's not a can we do this, it's have we put in enough work to attain this. 
So these ideas are sick, and I just want to show off this artwork that came from the concept of this book. Um, because we're not that far off here. I mean, all we need is a next level energy source. We just need to get to the next level of energy production for our machines so we can fly up there and put the stuff together. And then we just need to get it. We just need to extract it from the planets or asteroids and refine it. And that's not really that crazy too. So, yep. If you like this video, throw it a like, throw it a comment, give your input. Thanks for watching.